What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to another episode of the Smart Guy Moment Smack Talk Podcast. Coming to you, of course, from SmartGuyMoment.com. I'm your host, as always, Tony Mango. Joining me, as always, are Callum Wiggins. Dub. And Robert D. Felice. I'd like to apologize to the creative team behind ECW 2006, because I get it. <laughs> this is uh, this is going to be a little difficult in some ways, because um, this is actually a Patreon-sponsored edition that we have over here of the uh, fantasy booking. It's uh, sponsored by Magpie's Nest. Thank you, Magpie. For ECW December to Dismember 2006. Now, we covered that before over on the Missed the Smark side of things, and that was the first time I had checked out that pay-per-view, and we reviewed everything, and we talked about you know, our thoughts on all those matches and everything. And Magpie's idea was, hey, you know, what if you had creative control? What would you do? And so, the way that we've done the fantasy booking in the past is we've approached a lot of things that were kind of like, well, you know, kind of imagine out of nothing. There's a little bit more of a, a, a nuance to this because we know an exact card. We know a group of people that we can pick from. And... Like Rob said, this is not the easiest one <laughs> with the most amount of options, which is interesting. So my big issue here, Magpie, and thank you for the donation and all that, but you did also go, yeah, but I'm going to make you work with the same shit roster. Like, we can't pretend, hey, we're going to book Kurt Angle right so he never leaves to TNA. Right. We <laughs> can't go, uh, hey, you know, we'll we'll keep just incredible. It's like... We're working with the same restrictions, so this is really rough. And there are some variety kind of options that we could technically have. Like, we theoretically, the fact that they have Eminem against uh, the Hardy Boys means you could put somebody from Braun Smackdown on there. But then again, that's kind of cheating, you know? Uh, or at least that, that's how I looked at it. I don't know if you guys did that. Did you guys end up doing that? The Hardy Boys are on the, sh- on the actual show that they can be on this card, in my opinion. I gave myself even that. more restrictions and, than that, yeah. And they were. Yeah. I, I checked. I checked back on like TV shows that were being run in the past, and they were on ECW like virtually every week up for the like the month leading up to this show. So I feel like it's fair game to put them on there. So I did not because I tried to work just legitimately with the roster list given. However, I do understand that point. They did work on ECW, and. Yeah, I, I get it, but I didn't do it. So kudos to Calum for being smarter than all of us. <laughs> yeah, I was really tempted to be like, hey, and I would also trade these people over from Raw and SmackDown and give myself all this like great options, you know, oh, Batista's here and the, the such and such, but no, nah, I, uh, I, I mean, will, it I will say they're the only be. people that I do it with. Yeah. I don't do it with anybody else. That's the only... Th- those two, I don't do Eminem and either it's just the Hardy Boys. And that's, I mean, totally flexible. Like those are the options. Um, there is one person on my thing that uh, that Magpie had not put on his list. I think that it was just kind of an oversight, but I do have Al Snow on my list because I checked the roster at the time, and it seems like he was a part of it. He I, was I not. Have, um, he is technically so he's technically heighted by the. He's definitely he's te- he's technically like part of the roster, but. He's, he's not wrestling. Well, yeah, there's this weird moment where he like he starts on ECW and in the first like few months, two thousand six, and then he goes away for a while, and then he comes back and he's a trainer for AEW. But right. I've used him as I've used him as well. Yeah, worst case scenario, if you cut that match out of the card for mine, it's not like the card's great anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> this is not my best card that I've ever had. But um, you know, this is part of the pick your poison tier. This was the reason why is because it was a Patreon request. So if you like these kind of ideas and if you want to sponsor something else like Magpie has done, then hit up the Patreon. You know, there's uh, I, I tend to limit it to five a month just because we have to find the schedule for it and everything. But, you know, uh, take advantage of those as much as you can. And it helps out the website. It helps keep me uh, sane, keeps the morale up and everything like that. So. Again, thank you to Magpie for this. And uh, another way for you to do that, if you guys don't really trust Patreon or something, is the members-only membership side of things on YouTube. It's exactly the same thing as the Patreon. It's just on the YouTube stuff. So maybe you want to keep all your bills in one spot. I don't know how that works with YouTube Red or whatever. Is YouTube Red still a thing? I don't know. It's called YouTube Premium now. YouTube Premium, yeah, because Red was stupid. But um, 
Yeah, so uh, before we get into our cards and we break down what we've picked and everything, let me just do a little bit of house cleaning from some other things like that. If you do want to help us out on the monetary side of things, pick up a T-shirt on Tay Public and Redbubble. Uh, hit the applause button as like the little tip jar, essentially. But if you don't have the spare change in your wallet and you want to help us out some other ways, hit the like button on this. That helps out quite a bit with the SEO. Hit the uh, subscribe button. You know, follow us if you haven't done that already and ring that little notification bell because that way you know when these videos go up and when we go live for different things. And then you can join us for the live chats. And of course, if you're doing that, you could head up to the super chats and stuff. But yeah, just show any kind of support that you can, including dropping a comment below and telling us what your cards would be for this. Because that's always one of the most interesting things is if you're working with a limited amount of options and people have wildly different cards, it just uh, it shows what different kind of minds everybody brings to the table. So I always approach the fantasy booking. I don't know if you guys do the same quite thing, but I approach it as let me try to be as reasonable as possible from what WWE would consider instead of me just being like, hey, I really like uh, Matt Stryker. So he's going to be the world champion going into this. And that kind of thing, you know what I mean? Um, I think you always have to try to be as reasonable as possible. But, you know, it is fantasy booking. So try to have a little fun. Yeah. And one of the rules that I set, which I think that everybody kind of has to have set, is you can't just pick and choose from different eras. Like uh, the example I used on the website, you can't have modern day almighty Bobby Lashley with MVP because he's not doing that gimmick in 2006. So you have to keep that in mind, too. This is ECW Bobby Lashley. This is uh, Hardcore Holly, not Thurman Sparky Plug or anything. Um. Any uh, stuff you guys want to get into before we get into the actual cards? Yeah, I'll just get into this real quick. Well, first of all, I will say I do want to hear your card most because you have no idea what was happening at the time. So oh, That's another part to talk about, yeah. I, always... I really wasn't watching for the most part. I was kind of like in and out, like starting to get more deeply into it, but not fully embracing it yet. Yeah, so that's exciting to me. Also... There are championships for me. Like, I didn't just use the ECW championship. I There will be a television and tag team championship because NXT has proven that a third brand can do these things, and they own the properties for all of these belts. I have no idea why they were never utilized. I did not think about that. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've also taken the approach of adding both tag team titles and a television championship to my show because I'm treating it as a a brand that is, for the most part, outside of the Hardy Boys things, completely separate from the WWE spectrum. And I think it's also important to note that uh, ECW December to December will be coming from the Hammerstein Ballroom because they should have done that because doing it in actual uh, in actual WWE style arenas is a huge mistake. And part of the reason why ECW failed. It could have done it from the 2300 arena. Like the the whole point from the get go was let's run small arenas. They had the idea for NXT what it is now and they just were like yeah no we can't do that because sci-fi wants it so it's got to be a big production i will also specify ahead of time just based off of these couple of things that you've already said your cards are going to be better than mine no they won't <laughs> no trust me they're going to be better than mine I I don't even think that the card that i made is something that i would particularly like to watch <laughs> I mean, we have to preface also the fact that we're working we're working against the, one of what many people believe is the worst pay per view in yeah. WWE history. So it's not like we have a high bar that we have to leap over. Yeah. Uh, if anybody drops a comment below and they say, "Wow, Tony's is even worse," then that then uh, then my feelings will be hurt. Just do it now, <laughs> just just for fun, anyway. Yeah, you might yeah, as well right now before you, hear you even it. hear it. Yeah. You know, also tell me if my predictions are wrong for SummerSlam. <laughs> you know, just... So, uh, who wants to go first? Rob, do you want to go you first? Go first, because I'm sure you have. I'm sure you'll be able to get this out of the way in no less than ten minutes. Yeah, I probably could. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna go in order then of how I'd book like uh, the actual lineup. Like, you know, this match leads into that match and and such. Not like uh, top to bottom, most important or whatever. We're gonna start off with Shannon Moore against Matt Stryker. I hate it. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> With the idea of Well, hold on, let me get let me guess, Tony. Is it I'm a teacher and you you're a punk and I don't <laughs> like your rebel rousing attitude. It is. <laughs> <laughs> It's exactly what it is. Matt Stryker is the horrible teacher. Shannon Moore is the rebellious punk who rebels against his pseudo authority. They're two newer <laughs> ECW guys. It starts off with just that because it's a reminder of this is WWE ECW and it's not exactly the same as regular ECW, which I was never the biggest fan of to begin with. And Shannon Moore wins in some fashion i don't even know what and it's a generic opener <laughs> proud of you yeah <laughs> you caught exactly job, what the, <laughs> exactly what the uh the premise was he took on fucking balls mahoney at the actual show that was one of the only decent things i've heard part of it i'm not the biggest boss mahoney fan at this point i actually really liked shannon Moore. i thought that he could be like heading towards an intercontinental championship run I, I remember I, I that. Went, I, I went back and uh, watched some uh, of the uh, promos of of uh, Shannon Moore coming to ECW just to get in my mind set like what he looked like at this point in time, and it's just him staring down the camera for ten seconds. With each promo, it's just him in a different location staring at the camera for ten seconds without saying anything. <laughs> okay, he wouldn't be doing that for me then. <laughs> But then I go into a match that people actually might be interested in because it's an extreme rules match and it's uh an eight man tag team elimination match. I'm Holy jumping shit. straight to uh new breed versus ECW originals because that's one of the only things that I actually thought was somewhat interesting with the ECW brand at that point. And we don't have the strongest amount of new breed to work with because I didn't want to just put them all in one match and have this be one match card. So I've got Elijah Burke as the leader of the new breed. Sylvester Turkay. Or Turkay. Was it Turkay or Turkay? Turkay. Turkay. It's spelled Turkay. I don't know. Sylvester Turkey. Uh, and Doug and Danny Basham, where oh. the idea is that... Uh, so they're Paul Heyman's enforcers at that time, correct? correct. Yeah. Yeah, they're his uh, bodyguards that didn't actually really expose their face at any point in time, if if, if, I'm, if memory serves, during ECW. Correct. So I'm working with that idea and saying Paul Heyman is the ultimate heel of this brand. He does not want the ECW originals really in the mix. Of course, this is a story, not like, you know, the actual thing. And it's basically, hey, we've all worked with you in the past and you screwed us over constantly. You know, you owe me money, that kind of thing. And now you're trying to kick me out of ECW and bring these new guys in and everything. So Doug and Danny Basham are there as far as uh, Paul Heyman's representatives. Uh, Elijah Burke is the one spearheading the whole new breed. And Turkai is just kind of, you know, the heavy of the group. And the ones representing the ECW originals for this one are Sabu, Sandman, Stevie Richards, and Tommy Dreamer. And it's a standard elimination extreme rules match. People just beat the living tar out of each other. And somebody like Sandman probably doesn't get any eliminations because you know he gets a couple kendo stick shots in and he gets eliminated first more than anybody. And you kind of work through the list. Sabu, of course, does some table spots. Richards has some stuff. It's basically Richards and Dreamer more than anything against Burke and Turkai. And... I wasn't really sure which one I was going to go with for who wins, but I ended up deciding it would be better if the new breed lost and that Burke blamed the Bashams as in like, Hey, if you want me to be a part of this new breed, you can't have these types of guys in here. And then maybe that can lead to some releases and that can lead to some hiring some new people and switch up the rosters a little bit down, you know, cause eventually we get, I don't know if it's 2007 at one point, but we get like Marcus Corvan and everybody else. It's like, you know, kind of better. So, uh, yeah, it's just a means to be like, Hey, we know all these ECW guys. Let's have them smash chairs over people. Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do, yeah, do you give a, it more than the, um, do you give it more than like the six or seven minutes they gave it at WrestleMania 24? Oh, uh, you got it. Cause it's going to stretch out much of this card. <laughs> So he's thinking of the one, and they did a rematch on an episode of ECW like a week or two later, and it's so much better, and it's Extreme Rules, and it was a really good match. 
you just play into your hand. You know, you got these ECW guys. The Sandman's not wrestling a, you know, a clinic. No, he's wrestling like zombies and vampires for the entirety of 2006, pretty much. There's no Yeti on my card. (laughs) But there is the Great Kali. And the next match is what I'm calling the Great Kali Gauntlet. Kali uh, so. says, or actually, I've heard this written out. Well, Davari says on behalf of Kali that he can run through everybody on the roster. And to prove this correct, it's a gauntlet match. And he beats literally everybody on the brand that's a jobber that you can throw in here. It's not a match I really am super into, but I wouldn't think that there's any match that Kali could be into that I'd be really into because Kali's never been really great. So at this point, I don't have any real problems sacrificing a bunch of these guys to Kali to make him look strong, to make him be like the top, top guy on this, uh, you know, this monster heel sort of thing. So if you still got just incredible around, he loses, you got roadkill, Danny Doring, FBI, boss Mahoney, CW Anderson. It's like basically a chop a piece. It's just a means for Kali to be out there. And I don't think that the match with uh, Davari and Tommy Dreamer is something that I was like, oh, my God, I got to keep that going. Nor did I want to have Kali do anything that was more complicated. He does chops. He does choke slams. He does the claw. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is Kali before he got good. <laughs> that happened? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, yeah. I mean, he, I mean he, was, he was around for a while at that point. Like, this is him less than a year into the company. It's crazy that they even put him on ECW. And then, of course, he gets switched around and everything, too. But uh, Then we have a match that's actually on that card itself, the mixed tag team match, Mike Knox and Kelly Kelly against Kevin Thorne and Ariel, because I think that that's really one of the only things you could do with this era of the extreme type of thing is play into the TNA. So just do more of that. Give people what they want. TNA TNA is a lot better at this point in time. With an ampersand instead of an N. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, you just extend the spot where Shelley puts her foot up on uh, Kelly's neck for, and you just extend that for like ten minutes. Yeah, and like then you're good, really. the ten fifteen minutes. <laughs> you do the Bronco Buster spots. You you know you you do the whole thing with Mike Knox and uh, and Kelly Kelly doing the extreme exhibit a side of things. That wasn't quite then, but you know they were heading in that direction. So just speed it up a little bit. This is a benefit of hindsight. And um, I liked Knox. I liked Kevin Thorne. I liked Knox better than Thorne for the most part. So, like, give them some time. Let them actually work a match. See what happens. Well, it's weird, because, like, in, at this point in time, obviously, as we saw in the actual, when we watched the uh, one, uh, uh, watched the December to December show, they're both heels. Right. So that's part of the reason why. So you, would you actually make Knox a, a baby face, then, to try and actually get some, you know, I think sympathy I'd go, for the crowd? I think I'd go Thorn. I think Thorn I'd go with... Ed- with a weird thing where Thorne is more of the baby face and Kelly Kelly's more of the baby face and have it be like a weird, like, how's this oh, you work can tell, out like, kind you of tell, thing. Like, you can tell a Dracula story where she's like Nina and he's the one who's trying to like, who's like gradually trying to seduce her and Shelly, uh, not Shelly, Ariel is Ariel. not, uh, is not, yeah, is not into that. I call her Shelly because like, that's her name. Yeah. That's her name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not like you were just like, I don't know, Betty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, the little mermaid. It's just like, that's, oh, it's different area. Okay. So then I have a match between Rene Dupree and Al Snow. Al Snow, if he's available at this time, (laughs) he just loses. Uh, He's a jobber, it seems, from my little bit of research that I was able to do. And uh, Rene Dupree, it seemed like they were trying to, if, if I have this correct, they were trying to give him some kind of a thing as the most extreme person. And it was like, kind of just like, that's ridiculous, right? Yeah, they were just paying lip service to that idea of like, oh, he's over in ECW now and he's going to be the most extreme man they've ever seen and then he would just lose matches to Sandman and stuff like that. Yeah, well, so... Didn't they put him over for a bit and then have him like reform La Resistance for like a week? Uh, I can't remember it off the top of my head too much because I know Rob Conway was doing the con man thing at this point. Yeah, because I think they brought uh, Savan back for that one. Oh, okay. And, was uh... he doing the model thing at that point? Uh, yeah, he was. A weird time. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just a thing. And then you got the uh, ECW Championship Elimination Chamber match with like all the names on it because I thought about, you know, spreading these around and doing like 
you know, CM Punk against Test and Rod Dam- Rob Van Dam against Hardcore Holly and Big Show against Bobby Lashley and just kind of like spreading the names around. But then I thought, you know what? I wouldn't want to see that card either. So it needed something special to it. The Elimination Chamber match is special. Then you throw the biggest names on there. Then you're left with nobody else for the rest of the card. And ECW wasn't going to really move the needle anyway. So I'm like, oh, I'm sacrificing this card in, in a lot of ways. And it's exactly the same people. Big Show, Bobby Lashley, CM Punk, Hardcore Holly, Rob Van Dam, and Test. And the reason behind that is I don't think that people really hate this for anything more okay. than the idea of I wanted RVD or Punk to win. I didn't want Sabu taken out for Hardcore Holly. And I think if you have the benefit of hindsight and you give the belt to Punk or RVD instead of Lashley and you don't play the switcheroo game with Holly and Sabu, then I see no reason why this match wouldn't be something that makes sense for Marky. What is wrong with you? You mean to tell me that you booked an Extreme Elimination Chamber match and didn't just go, okay, here's Dreamer, Sandman, and Van Damme. Because I don't like Dreamer and Sandman enough to think that they matter as much. There, it's a fucking ECW show, Tony. So so he's fantasy booking in the case of like, He's fancy, but he's fantasy booking an ECW show, and then he's going to the guy and said, "Yeah, honestly, I don't actually like ECW, so I'm gonna like, just I'm gonna put Bobby Lashley <laughs> over." <and stuff." laughs> well, I don't have Lashley winning it. No, yeah, yeah, I assume you have. I, assume you have I Bobby feel like this is a great this, time right? to ask this question. What's your middle name, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> it's Vincent. <laughs> yeah, I have. Touch uh, good shit. I have Punk winning. <laughs> All right. And I have it being that. Rob Van Dam, you can't really trust after the way that things have happened. Lashley can still work his way towards being that guy. But I remember at this time that I wasn't thinking that Bobby Lashley was like, we need to make him a world champion. And ECW was like a test run sort of thing. Give it to Punk. Why not? Try it out. See what happens. He could be the rebellion against the Paul Heyman overruling regime, essentially. And have uh, Lashley get taken out by Big Show and Test so he looks strong have CM Punk work his way through Big Show, probably test. Uh, maybe Holly gets eliminated by RVD to get a little bit of retribution for that. And there you go. <laughs> I, have to, I have to say, Tony, it's some of your finest work. <laughs> it totally is, right? Yeah. <laughs> every, I think this is what This should be the thing that you submit when you say that you need a job in WWE. Yeah, every... Uh, uh, literally, every... it'll get you hired, I promise. <laughs> Every card I could think of where I was spreading out those names, I was just like, then it's just a, yeah, I don't know. So I was working with like, how do I make this feel a little bit more like ECW? And to be perfectly honest, ECW from my point of view was, here's a couple of names and then a bunch of people that are like trash bag wrestlers beating the crap out of each other. Dude, you're going to get hired. This is great. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Vince would love this, right? Yeah. Yeah, ECW was never my thing. Even back when it was like the most popular, like, I mean, we've talked about it in the past where I'm like, oh, RVD's good, but he's not one of the best ever of everything, you know? So well, drop Rob your comments below that. about how much yeah. uh, you hate this card. <laughs> Rob, wow. I, I literally don't know how you're going to talk that one, honestly. All right, so I'll start here. There is a tag team tournament for the tag team championship, with the caveat being there will be two semifinal matches on this show. And the winners of that go into a three-way dance with the Bashams to crown the Tag Team Champions. Why the Bashams get an automatic buy into the finals? Because they're with Paul Heyman. I have decided to not make them masked because people know who the Bashams are. And they're actually a pretty decent tag team for that era. So let's get started with first tag team semifinals, the FBI, Lil Guido, and Tony Mamaluke against Mike Knox and Test. And Knox and Test go over. The second tag team semifinal, Sylvester Takai. I actually, and... I actually quite like that because it's weird because like you got Mike Knox with his um, actual girlfriend and someone who legitimately boned Kelly Kelly. So that's <laughs> well, yeah, okay, so while, yes, that is true, they did also pair them on TV, and I thought that was one of the best usages of Mike Knox ever. So is there a tag I, team I named the Eskimo Brothers or whatever it is? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Call him, call him Eiffel Tower. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. That's ECW. Uh, all right, so second match, Chakai and Burke against Dreamer and Sandman. And I put 
Drew Murray and Sandman over because they're, they're, it's an ECW show. Burke takes the pin, Turkai gets pissed, and goes off on Burke because he can be like a Miro-style singles guy in the future if this brand was work? worth it. Did you ever it's, see him work? Well, in theory, in theory, it's all theoretical. Here. Does he have a flexible wife, though? <laughs> he might. I don't know. Uh, third match. Kelly Kelly is off test. Yeah, <laughs> I <can't>. um, <laughs> CW Anderson against Kevin Thorne because it's a harmless squash match. Kevin Thorne gets the win. Anderson's great, but, you know, it's way past his time here. TV title, two out of three falls. Renee Dupree, Shannon Moore. Shannon Moore gets the win. I assume this would be a very fine wrestling match. Dupree's not bad, and Moore represents everything ECW should be. And I think that's why he gets the TV title here. A guy with loads of tattoos and uh, a mohawk staring down a camera. That's everything that ECW should be. (laughs) Okay, if you take out what they were trying to do and just go with, he's a hardy boy camp guy, that's the camp he comes from. He can do the flips and tricks and stuff, and he does have that, like, punk aesthetic. Mm-hmm. I think you can work with him. Extreme Rules match. Hardcore Holly against Sabu. I think it's egregious that Sabu was not on the actual card. Hardcore Holly against RVD was one of the most fun Extreme Rule matches I've ever seen from the WWE ECW. And I imagine they just have fun beating the shit out of each other. You know, because Holly's stiff and Sabu's stiff, and it'd just be a lot of fun to watch. A lot of, uh, this is before chair shots to the head were banned. So lots of just like stiff concussion causing chair shots to the head and <laughs> table bumps. And like, even they, with they, the benefit of hindsight. <laughs> even with the benefit of hindsight, because it's still 2006 and it is what it is. All right, three-way dance for the tag team titles. Basham. Speaking of stiff, Test is involved. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Basham, Sandman, and Dreamer, and Knox and Test. Uh, Sandman and Dreamer win because the two heel teams can't get along. Yes, it's very WWE booking, but there's lots of kendo stick shots here, lots of tables, lots of trash cans. It's an ECW show. We're not trying to make movies here, pal. We're just giving people what they want. Sam and Dreamer win, and they celebrate with the people. All right. Bobby Lashley against The Big Show in a steel cage I quit match. Why is it a steel cage I quit match? Because, look, Big Show is leaving either way. This is not for the ECW title, because even though, yeah, we couldn't change the fact that RVD had to lose the belt on July 4th, I'm not going to leave it on the big show that long but since they wanted Lashley in ECW I think this is a great way to put somebody over have big show lose and then Lashley can go on being the next big thing per se um my main event match and my the only angle that I knew going into this I was going to do RBD serves his 30 day suspension comes back beats the big show and he gets into a rivalry with heel CM Punk, who is straight up doing the straight edge means I'm better than you. He's pissed off that RVD even has an opportunity because, hey, you had everything and you dropped the ball. Why are we giving this guy the ball? So it's CM Punk, Rob Van Dam in a stairway to hell match, which is just a ladder match with a ring of barbed wire hanging above the ring and the guys get to use it. And CM Punk wins by using the Anaconda device with the barbed wire wrapped around RVD. CM Punk's your new champion. He and Lashley can go have a feud. And that's my attempt at a halfway decent ECW show with actual stakes. Thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think it's... I like the fact there is an angle in the main event. At least you thought about that. Yeah, because and, it's like... And, and it's, it's good to, in a show where you have, I guess, limited performers, it makes sense to do some sort of, like, 
Give me Kevin. Like inside tour- yeah, inside tournament. And mu- and have them uh, perform multiple times. Yeah, because I think that for what Dreamer and Sandman can do, they can work a couple times and the people will pop to see them multiple times and see them win. Uh, you know, like, that's what I tried to go for. Just pop the people. Pop the people. I, oh, I'll, say, I'll say this. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm trying to, on the fly, book another card. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> and before you even Why? before you even said it, I was like, "Oh man, Rob Van Dam against CM Punk with the whole Straight Edge Society thing. If you could do that." And then you started saying that, and I'm like, "Okay, I'm onto something there at the very least." <laughs> but I thought you said we couldn't go with gimmicks like that because he, he wasn't the Straight Edge guy at this point. He was but, just and he's still there. I can at least book him. One no, I'm thinking more so just on the, like I was thinking, man, it's a shame we couldn't do that. And then when you said mm. that, I'm like, oh, at least I'm onto something that's, <laughs> you know, like, I couldn't dedicate all the time in the world to figuring out uh, that kind of thing. But we're going to try to figure out uh, our consensus card at the end of this. <laughs> Which means, Callum, you're up next. Oh, good. Okay, so I'll try and do this in some, I haven't really got this in like a um, order of when I expect things to happen, but I'll just think about that on the fly. So opening match, ECW tag team title match, the Hardy Boys defend the championship against the Basham Brothers. I feel like the Basham Brothers were a decent tag team and they had some good matches with teams like the Guerrero, so I feel like they match up well with some high flies like the Hardys. The Hardys won tag titles a couple of, like maybe a month or so ago in like a 14 tournament where they defeated Eminem in the finals. So even though they're still on the Raw and SmackDown side of things, and Jeff Hardy's still in Cornell Champion and all that other stuff, they're kind of, they're as a team on ECW, but Matt's on his own in, on SmackDown, Jeff's on his own on Raw, and they get to just hold the titles for a little while. They defend it successfully here against the Basham Brothers because I have planned for them dropping the title somewhere down the road, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Uh, let's have a traditional freeway dance. Uh, C.W. Anderson against Balls Mahoney against Hardcore Holly. Because I feel like you, even though these guys don't really have much going for themselves at the moment, it would just be a case of, oh, it's ECW, they will like a good hardcore freeway dance where Balls Mahoney just hits them multiple times over the head with a steel chair and wins. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's just what you want to see. But I had Balls Mahoney winning because I think Balls was, even though he's not the gr- most crisp wrestler in the world, for an ECW crowd, he's a he's a big deal, so... I thought, oh yeah, give him a win on this one. Uh, we have the FBI of the uh, little Gu- little Guido and Tony Marmaluke against Kevin Fawn and Shannon Moore, because I felt like they were like two outsiders or two people that have some sort of like a uh, more bizarre connection than two of the other than anybody else really. They're two people that really should be loners, but they're maybe drawn together out of their lon- loneliness, or maybe you could do some sort of weird gimmick thing if you want like a lost shannon... boys kind of gimmick huh? yeah or, or or shannon moore gets bitten by kevin form and so he becomes a vampire hmm. at the yes. end of one of their matches so we could do that and it. so yeah yeah so they're with uh, areas with them obviously uh you just have a um you have a classic uh cat fight with trinity and ariel on the outside because you know gotta get some tna in there as well right and i don't have any women's matches on this show because... it's literally tna it's trinity yeah. and ariel yeah exactly <laughs> And then FBI gets the win because FBI, FBI were, were cool act. I feel like they should have got more wins, really, even though they were kind of treated as jobbers. Um, I have Stevie Richards versus Matt Stryker. With whole the whole thing essentially is a uh, Stryker is getting a lot of heat with the company because he wants to stick to the rules, even though it's an extreme environment, so he gets a lot of heat that way. Um, but he still manages like sneak wins because he's still a talented wrestler and he uses he. His, uh, his gimmick is essentially what it was in ECW, which is someone who professes that the rule should be followed, but he always cheats to win. And he essentially does that with Stevie Richards as well. And Stevie Richards is uh, like organically popular enough that he'll get baby babyface sympathy for this match, but Stryker will end up winning by like holding the tights, poking him in the eye, rolling him up, that sort of thing. Uh, then I imagine we'd have some, maybe some sort of a Kelly's expose segment where uh, Mike Knox, obviously, as per usual, tries to get her off the stage because he doesn't like his girlfriend taking off her clothes. But then Roadkill comes out and tries to just knock him down and sort of like tries to get Kelly going it, at it again. And then Mike Knox beats the hell out of Roadkill because who cares about Roadkill? <laughs> <laughs> J- 
just it's just like i couldn't think of anybody like the because essentially that it would just be a way of like getting more heat on mike knox and just having him eventually that would just set up a match next week between those two that mike knox could win so i'm not really thinking that much ahead at this point but i get into the i get to the better stuff now so there's a number one contenders match for the next uh, ecw championship shot it's Tess versus al snow so I'd basically just tell the gimmick of Test is now in ECW. He's more jacked than he's ever been and stuff like that. And he's running roughshod over loads of people. And Al Snow is going through like a, a renaissance in ECW where he's got the head chance going. He's feeling like his old self again. But obviously he's in the twilight of his career. But he's going on a really good run. So they just feel like, OK, put these two guys who are on win streaks against each other. And the winner gets the next shot of the ECW title. And you have Snow get a lot of fan support and... Feels like he's just about gets a few good near falls, but Test like kicks his head off with the big boot and eventually gets the victory. So Test will be the next challenger. More on that when we find out what the actual title match is. Uh, okay, here's the one where I'm I stretch it a little bit with something that's something straight out of AEW. Because why not take something from AEW if you don't if you have the opportunity to? Uh, we have the formation of Team Towers. Hmm. Well, we've had we've had the formation of Team Taz. Taz is the ma- Taz is the manager of the unit of Bobby Lashley and Elijah Burke. I like it because Bobby Lashley, is, well, we've proven it, is better as a heel, and he's come to ECW. But uh, Taz sees like raw potential in him because them pushing him as a baby face act in ECW was just never it was never going to work, and it and it never did really. But having him come in as like oh I see a lot in this guy because he's just um of absolute freak of nature, a pure athlete, like a Brian Cage character. And so, yeah, Taz can get behind him and say, this is the future of ECW and people need to get on board with it. And Taz could play a great heel in that regard. Elijah Burke would, it's obviously it was a great mouthpiece, a great talker with himself. So I kind of see them as like a Ricky Starks and Brian Cage uh, pairing where Bobby Lashley doesn't say too much, but he's the powerhouse guy. And obviously the guy that's primed for more future success and Elijah Burke is the charismatic talker. And then they take on Tommy Dreamer and the Sandman in, in an Extreme Rules tag team match. So, yeah, you just have those two, like, there's never say die attitude. And Taz is talking like, oh, OK, these two are the future of ECW, where they're still saying, like, no, ECW is still ours until we say it is. And so they he targets them because they're seen as relics of the past. And they have a really good Extreme Rules match where you get to see, you get to like, demonstrate some of the extreme edge that Bobby Lashley and Elijah Burke have. And they end up getting the win over Tommy Dreamer and the Sandman here. But eventually they'll get like the heat back uh, later on. But I just felt, oh, this is a really good opportunity to establish some new blood. Speaking of which, ECW Television Championship uh, Finals match, like it's a tournament finals, uh, CM Punk versus Sabu. Because outside of RVD, Sabu is the only person of that ECW roster that has previously held the Television Championship. So I thought he would be a good person to be like that interlinking thing between the old ECW and what it is today. And Punk is obviously like he's the new young up and coming star. He's like what the future of ECW really represents. And so you'd have an eight man tournament. You'd have four quote unquote upstarts or new blood or whatever you want to call them on one side. You have Punk, Striker, Mike Knox, uh, Elijah Burke on one side, and then four veterans on the other side of Sabu, Dreamer, Balls Mahoney and Stevie Richards. Have these two reach the final uh have another like a good like and it's a number extreme rules match because most of the matches on this card should be extreme rules because it's ecw uh but they have like a good back and forth and punk eventually gets the win he's the first new television champion this kind of sets him up to hold that for a few months eventually drop it to maybe like elijah burke or something like that down the road but and then by that point he'd be prime position to challenge for the world championship so this is just a good starting platform for punk and then the main event one that i thought most about in terms of actual like booking uh is big show defending the ecw championship against rob van Dam. now the the main wrinkle is the fact that the big show is accompanied to the ring not by paul Heyman, but by vince mcmahon and rob van Dam is accompanied by paul Heyman. So the story that I would tell is, because they did say RVD has to lose the championship, but they didn't tell, say that I could, couldn't change how he loses the title. And how he loses the title is that when Big Show joined ECW, the brand, 
he was planted there as a mole by Vince McMahon mm. to screw with ECW. And basically say, ha, huh, you thought you actually had this guy. Big Show's always been in my back pocket. Because essentially Big Show does spend a lot of 2006 in Vince McMahon's back pocket because he helps Vince take on DX and stuff like that. So I thought, okay, why not just build the story around that? They could have him take out Paul Heyman as well. And so basically Vince is, even though ECW's run like ECW is, it's like Vince is still saying that I, I own this company, I own this brand now, and I'm going to do what I want with it because ECW's now my plaything. You know, Big Show just defeats some ECW uh, legends along the way, like Sabu and stuff like that. In an ideal world, I would say in an ideal world, this would be Kurt Angle and not the Big Show. Because who, who, what, what, what more perfect than have Kurt Angle, the guy who at the original ECW One Night Stand was part of the group of wrestlers saying that ECW sucked, saying that okay, I'm actually going to join ECW, but I'm only doing it to screw with them and, and turning heel and I'm aligning with Vincent Man. I respect but, it. But saying that Kurt Angle's not there, we'll go to the Big Show instead. If the, if if I could have had Kurt Angle, Big Show probably would have just taken on Carly and or something like that in just some sort of bizarre freak show match. <laughs> Um, but then you have, uh, so show retained the title multiple times against ECW originals. RVD comes back. He jumps through a load of hurdles, earns a rematch with the stipulation is if he loses, he has to leave ECW and quote unquote, come home to either raw or SmackDown. Uh, but thanks part to like Paul Heyman, he takes out Vince at ringside in this, like some sort of tackle, like Donald Trump does at WrestleMania 23 to Vince. <laughs> I think um, that's probably all he'd be capable of doing. Yeah, RVD hits the frog splash. He recaptures the title from Big Show. It's a big celebration at the end of it. And then later in the week, Show has a rematch. He loses the rematch, and Vince Man fires him. And then he brings in, and then either he leaves ECW alone, and then ECW comes like its own like little separate entity thing. Or he finds someone else and tries to go after him, and maybe that builds up towards a match at WrestleMania 23. But I feel like you're going to do the Trump stuff at WrestleMania 23, so maybe it's just better that Vince admits defeat to ECW, just lets them get on with their own shit, and and yeah, it becomes more of like a more of a, a distinct entity away from the main WWE shows. Worth noting, at this point in time, they don't have the Trump shit mm. locked. Yeah. Like that was off the back of a. Real life feud that Trump had with Rosie O'Donnell of all people. So <laughs> they just shifted plans. It was supposed to be, I believe, Mick Foley against Vince McMahon. Hmm. So if there was anything you could ever tie into ECW, it'd be yeah. that. Yeah, that that'd be good as well. I will say that um, going forward, within like a couple of weeks or months, uh, the tag titles change hands where the Hardys dropped them to so Bobby Lashley and Elijah Burke. The team Taz holds the gold. Right. And then they have it for a while. And then maybe if the same punk drops it, he might might drop it to Elijah Burke, but maybe you can have him drop it to someone like Test or or Kevin Fawn or, or Matt Stryker. Actually, Matt Stryker would probably be my choice for that one because then he would get massive heat for beating him for that. And I think Stryker would be – it would, was really good for heel as long as ECW, the rest of ECW, was booked correctly. Having a guy that comes out and just wants to enforce the rules would be a big heat magnet. But, yeah, that's my card. Man, were you more into ECW when they brought in Big Daddy V, Tony? Because it was no, I, I mean, just because it's Mabel and that joke goes on, it doesn't mean I'm super into that. I no, mean, by I that actually, point, you'd be able to do the Monster Mash, the Big Man Buffet. I didn't with him uh, and Mark Henry and Kane and stuff. I didn't like ECW pretty much at all. Like, uh, I liked when the Miz was there and like Morrison. They started working their way, but I still was just like, man, all right, like I want to watch Raw and SmackDown instead, kind of thing. I have been playing around with a, a separate card that to mix around with mine a little bit. Uh, I haven't quite figured it out yet. The only things that I, so far I've um, taken the people out of the Elimination Chamber match because I really like your ideas of like doing the TV title. It just didn't dawn on me. Um, my brain's been far too scattered lately. But um, so instead, I uh, I took out like. Um, the Rene Dupree and Al Snow match, and I took out the Great Khali Gauntlet because <laughs> it's terrible. And I replaced that with, um, instead, I've got three different matches. I still have the um, the eight-man elimination Extreme Rules thing. I still have the Shannon Moore and Matt Stryker one, and I still have the Mike Knox and Kelly Kelly against Kevin Thorne and Ariel. But uh, I ended up going with um, CM Punk and Hardcore Holly for the TV title. As kind of like Holly's the champion, 
he's always testing the young guys backstage, that kind of deal. And uh, Punk wins it. I've got Lashley against Test in like a feats of strength kind of thing. And I really kind of like that idea of the RVD and Big Show thing, so I'm stealing that from Callum. <laughs> That's for the ECW Championship. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Keeping all of this in mind, my one and a half cards, essentially, and the cards that you guys have put in there, let's try to figure out, if we can, um, some kind of a consensus card. Okay. Um, yeah. There's um, I'm I'm going to be honest. There's very little I want to take from your card, Tony. Oh, I am not surprised <laughs> at all. Uh, I'm not surprised in the slightest bit. Um, yeah. I mean, I I personally think... I mean, I do like the idea of the Punk and RVD title match. You can build it up around that, those lines. But I, I kind of feel like Punk should start with the TV title rather than go straight to the world. That's where I have him in this secondary card that I made against Hardcore Holly for the tag, uh, TV title. Yeah. And and the issue I'd have with that is just because neither of them are ECW guys. Or at least like not initial ECW guys. So I kind of feel like you need at least one ECW original in that match. Hmm. So I'd I'd go with Sabu over that or yeah, that's just that's just that was my logic going into it, just because I feel like if you have the Hulk I I guess you can have it because it might be a better match. But if you're gonna have extreme rules anyway, then Sabu might be the better bet. I mean, I I, I kind of like your tag team title idea. I kind of I kind of like putting um, Dreamer and Sandman Thank in you. it as a tag team thing. But then again, I like the fact that I've got a Team Taz on the thing. Yeah, I, I feel like, like the, I like the Team Taz thing. That's really cool. Because I feel like this is a better use of Lashley than other people can come up with. I would say merge them and do. Like we can do the tag team thing, but have it go to Team Taz. Okay, yeah, we could, yeah we could do that instead. I like maybe have that as a um, but have that as the tag title match, and then that means I can take the holidays out because technically the holidays aren't part of the ECW brand. So to make tag it a bit team. more of like the actual roster at that point. I'm typing these out. Uh, tag team title match. You got Team Taz, Burke, and Lashley against who? Dreamer and Sandman. And maybe the Bashams as well, if you want to do the free, if you want to do the freeway dance. Possibly. But I take Basham. take um, like, uh, Knox and and test out. They can do they can do something else as a tag team. Like they could take on the um the FBI or something, just like a preliminary match. Unless you want to do the Kevin Fawn air uh, Shannon Moore thing. Well, I guess let's uh let's approach it this way too. The the four <laughs> ECW championship ideas that we have. Um, the Elimination Chamber one, the well, it's the same one because I just took it from Callum. So, um, the the Elimination Chamber one, the RVD and Big Show one, and then what was yours, Rob? Punk and RVD. Punk and RVD. Punk and RVD. Oh, that's right. Um, between those, if we're giving ourselves the ability to not do the straight edge thing, I would assume the RVD and Big Show one, right? I would probably do that. Yeah. So ECW title, RVD versus Big Show. I really like that idea of if you lose, you have to go back to the other brand and not yeah, that's mess so around clever. with us anymore. That's mm. so like because Vince knows that he doesn't want to lose him, he doesn't want him to be fired and stuff like that. But he says like, you just can't be an ECW, and then you're mine. I can do what you what I want with you. Okay, so that takes you out RVD, Big Show, Burke, Lashley, Dreamer, and Sandman, possibly the Bashams. TV title scenario because we're all agreeing TV title would be cool, right? Yeah, even well, though I've never liked yeah. the TV title. I mean, what was your TV title match, Rob? My television championship match was Rene Dupree versus Shannon Moore, so Punk should probably be in the TV title match. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I just, I don't get either of those two as TV champion. Just, I, I mean, I, I, maybe I'm, I'm not clearly the odd one out here, but like Shannon Moore didn't, didn't do jack shit for me. Well, so knowing like... that I was going to utilize Punk in the headliner, right? That's still mm. a reason. Yeah, absolutely. But just like. But I think I think it should be Punk and Sabu. I would don't have absolutely dream. sign off on that. Punk and yeah. Sabu. CM Punk versus Sabu. So that, that does leave us Hardcore Holly to work with. Test. Uh, we have Dreamer, Sandman, Sabu. So Stevie Richards. Uh, Turkey. Or Turkey. Um, Shannon Moore. Matt Stryker. Kali. 
Dupree, Al Snow, Mike Knox, Kelly Kelly, Kevin Thorne, and Ariel, and then a bunch of jobbers that I have written down. But they're, you know, C.W. Anderson and so on forth. Um, I, I think um, I think we could take, because um, I don't, the idea of like the test announced, no, not my consensus match, but I feel like if you were to book Hardcore Holly as a baby face, you could do test Hardcore Holly instead. Hmm. Yeah, like that, that might be, that might be a better one, unless you, unless you feel like there's there's like legs of doing like a test and a, a test the, and four match against someone, a yeah. not test and four and a test and Knox match against somebody. The thing with that scenario is Holly doesn't have any real contenders. Where like if he's a heel in this, who's the top babyface? Stevie Richards that we have left. That's it. Well, yeah, but I'd say like make Holly. I, I guess Holly is a heel at this point, but Holly did flop between babyface and heel throughout. His short run on ECW. Um, oh, see, I totally don't remember that. Oh, he, he, t- he turned babyface after that Extreme Rules match with RVD, and then they turned him back heel again to attack RVD. Oh, okay. So if we're working with him as a babyface, then that's a lot easier. Well, yeah, I, nah. can, I, I can see him against Test. I'm at least of the opinion that his ECW run was probably his best from a quality output standpoint. Yeah. So I'm I, okay with him as a babyface. I mean, realistically, Tony, if you're looking for the top babyface outside of if you had to keep hard colleagues heel, as much as you don't want to admit it, Balls Mahoney was the, is the next top babyface. Even more so than Richards? Yeah. yeah. Really? Huh. Much yeah. bigger deal for ECW than Steve Richards was. Steve Richards is a much better wrestler, but Balls Mahoney was a big deal for ECW. So what are we thinking here? Are we thinking Holly against Test, Richards, Mahoney, Knox, some kind of Thorn thing, some kind of multi-man? Um, I, think, I mean, I like I like my FBI. I, I like bringing uh, Moore and Fawn together as tag team. And so I'd probably put them against the FBI like I've got on my one. I have some sort of freeway dance on there, so maybe you could have the people that aren't in the number one contenders match for doing, let's say if we did Tess and Holly against each other, then maybe put Stevie Richards, Balls Mahoney and uh, Al Snow or something like that in a, in a freeway dance or something. Cause I feel like you need to have at least one freeway dance in there. Or you do I have potentially that. the tag title one. Oh yeah, absolutely. But I feel like you needed a more traditional one as well, just cause that's an ECW thing. Or would you move uh, Dreamer and Sandman to be Dreamer and Richards to get a better quality match and put Sandman in the triple threat? Nah, because, again, it's it's not about the quality of the match at this point in certain aspects of it. It's just about getting the, the pop of the Sandman wrestling. And look, I think you're thinking about this too much as, like, oh, what would be the best quality matches? Whereas you know, if the ECW fan is thinking, what is going to make me go holy shit more times? And that's probably the Sandman caning people in the cross the face multiple times and drinking beer. <laughs> so currently we have, what, three matches on here? We got Punk Sabu for the TV title, RVD Big Show for the ECW title, tag title is Team Taz, essentially, Burke and Lashley against Dreamer and Sandman, possibly Bashams. And then what, what else were we thinking? I'm losing track already. Um, uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of, at this point, we'd probably just be making... A just new matches card. for the sake of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they're, they're like the three matches that are kind of important. The rest of them are just like a miasma of stuff that can potentially happen. Well, we know we got Mike Knox and Kelly Kelly. Uh, that's an act in some mm. fashion. I liked Knox. Kelly Kelly, of course, she's got her uh, role at this point that people are going to be super into. We got to do something with them, right? Sure. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, I mean, again, it's just a case of we're just going to be throwing together like a new card. It's not really like, I know, I know it's like, Oh, we want to create this collective yeah. card and stuff like that, but we can't create a collective card because now we've already moved too many pieces around. Yeah. We've hacked enough of it that it, it just becomes, this is a conference table at this point. Yeah. Um, and I kind of, feel, and, and yeah, not to toot my own horn or something like that, but I just feel like, well, if it was just to put a card together, it'd probably just be my one. <laughs> like that, that would be, and I would just like shout you two down because Tony's one, like, so like, you well, Tony's this was time. awful. Tony's was <laughs> Tony's was awful. Yeah, and I do. Like, lo- I, I do I, like I, my I, second I, attempt better. Yeah, yeah, and then I would I would try and find compromises with Rob's one, but while still just pushing my one as much as possible. <laughs> yeah, I think because to be honest, I don't like any of these cards. Well, no, cause, well, yeah, you. It's not. It's not for you. Yeah, like, I mean, obviously, my card's terrible, and. Uh, hmm. 
but even the other ones, like the the only things that are making me go like, oh, okay, that'd be kind of interesting, are things like like RVD and Big Show. That's interesting. But to me, if that was on like a WrestleMania, I'd be like, all right, that's like C minus tier. I'm not all that into it. Yeah, we're we're, we're playing with the C a, brand. Yeah, exactly. So it's, yeah, there's there's not a huge amount. We're we playing can with the do. D brand at this point. Yeah. Essentially, at this point in time, because ETW as well, as a brand, is so new, they're only like six months in at this point, you're essentially still trying to play the hits with the ECW guys while still while trying to establish new guys and getting them over as like the next generation of ECW guys, which is kind of what they tried to do with the um the, the Superstar Initiative thing. Yeah. I'll also say is, this, by the way. Like, I, if I were in creative, ECW wouldn't be a thing. Like, not just ECW itself, but I wouldn't have even tried to, like, redo ECW. I would have been like, no, that was a part of its era. If we want a third brand, let's make it just a regular third brand, like Raw and SmackDown. Just have it be, I don't know, whatever. Smash or something like that. I don't it know. It, wouldn't, been, it like, wouldn't be named that. Like, they had Ohio Valley Wrestling. They could have figured out something else for the O and the V to stand for. You know, they, they had ideas. And I, I never, think NXT worked out being the best of them. Yeah, I never ever, if they would have been like, we want to bring ECW back and we would have capitalized on that brand, I would have been like, uh, I don't think it's going to work because we're not going to do the ECW thing the way that the ECW people liked. And then... Well, and then the original happen. plan, it originally was a Shane McMahon idea, wasn't it? Where it was like, hey, let's run he wanted it to He wanted to bring it back, he wanted to bring it back to the digital web. Right, like we're going to run it show. exclusively on our website. Hmm. And just use some of our developmental guys as a way to say, hey, we're like, here's this cool internet show. Yeah, you basically wanted to has. do Raw Underground in some ways. <laughs> yeah, well, basically, because it'd be a website show, it means they wouldn't be held by the same restrictions as they would do on television, which means they could make it more akin to the actual ECW product. And right. then they decided, oh, we can actually make money by putting it on TV. And so yeah. they put it on TV and completely watered it down. And it became hmm. shit within a couple of weeks. Hmm. So. One of the interesting things about that ECW, I remember at the time, and even now to an extent, was they had a thing called the Hardcore Hangover, where the very next day, you could fully download from WWE, like, the full main event matches with, like, Big Show and DX, and Big Show and uh, Ric Flair, and all those kinds of things. So should we... uh figure out the rest of this card or should we just kind of go like all right that then it's just sort of random i feel okay with saying callum's card is <laughs> kind of like the de facto card we don't usually do that but i think he put the most time and effort into it and it shows and i'd be okay with dubbing his card as i literally D1 spent one show. hour on this card so okay, <laughs> if then, i put the most yeah. time and effort into it then yeah in fairness i spent about 10 minutes but i think my card was leagues ahead of Tony's. I and have been off from yours. I have been so far disjointed that I have no idea what time I. Oh, well, hold on, it. hold on. Now, yes, you have been, and we do feel for you. But let's <laughs> tell the truth: if you took five hours. Would you come up with anything better than what you did? If I would have taken an hour, I guarantee I would have thought of some. I, I didn't even think about the TV title. Totally forgot about it. Mm. Like, yeah, you know. it's yeah, it's 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 one of those things that. I mean, they didn't think of it, so why should we be expected to? But it's just like, right. but, but yeah, it, it just felt like it was an easy, like, can't miss type thing. Admittedly, when I first heard of this idea, I thought, oh, cool, we'll have, we'll have Angle. And then we get the roster sheet. Right, like, yeah, and I'm like, oh, man, yeah, I can't uh, use Angle on here. Because like, I was like, okay. That was the very so first thing like, I did. It was like, Angle and Lashley. Like, if you'd have told me you could have Lashley, but you also get Kurt Angle... Now we've got a world title match that I think people would pay to see, and then you can do Punk RVD television title, you know? But Yeah, because th there is a good story to tell with RVD in the television title rather than the the main one, just because the TV title was so synonymous with RVD. It's RVD's title. Paul Heyman just said in 2021, if ECW was still around, Rob Van Dam would probably still be the TV champion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh... So but, yeah, I like we the did, challenge. Job, yeah. I like the it's, challenge it's of this whole thing because, uh, again, not only is ECW not a thing for me, and not only have I been completely scatterbrained, but on top of that, 
I wasn't fully watching at this point. So that's what you get when you combine those elements <laughs> for that. You guys much uh, deeper onto that side of things. So that's why you guys had better cards. And um, but fantasy booking in general is something that we enjoy doing. So we yeah, want, I love we doing want, these we want more stuff. Yeah, we we want more stuff like this. Yes, please. Please have us fantasy book more because these are fun. I absolutely love doing fantasy booking things. So even something like this one where I'm like, oh, my God, I have no idea what I'm going to do. That was fun to be able to try to figure something out with, like, what do I do with Rene Dupree? <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, of course, it's funny as hell to be like, all right, Shadow Moore versus Matt Stryker. Oh, Christ, I know exactly what Tony's doing here. <laughs> you know? So, um, yeah, thank you to Magpie for donating to the patreon and suggesting this for the pick of poison tier if you guys want us to do more fantasy booking stuff by all means that is the method to deliver that and then we will or to request it and deliver it supply and demand i don't know how this works but um drop your comments below tell us your thoughts on the cards that you guys would make because i'm sure that there's going to be lots of different options here i mean i didn't think at all about doing like a team taz angle and as soon as you said that i'm like oh my god that's so much better well aew uh, got there first really so yeah i can't take all the credit <laughs> Even still, though, I mean, it just completely didn't. Then again, neither did the TV title. Anyway, um, yeah, follow uh, us for what's happening up next. Most likely a hot tag, so I'm not entirely sure. I'm trying to still figure out some plans for some things. But stay tuned to the YouTube channel and to whatever podcast feed you're listening to. I don't know, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify. And... Um, Obviously, follow fanboysanonymous.com. Check out everything that's happening over there as well. That's the sister website, Blue Brand, where you will find all the movie reviews and some different kind of things like the Review to a Kill series about the James Bond franchise. And if you are following me at Tony Mango, you can follow some other stuff that I have going on on you know some freelance some uh, articles and everything. You should follow what these guys have going on on their Twitter accounts and everything else they're doing as well. Callum? Yeah, but you can follow me on Twitter at Wigmeister14. Check out all the stuff on smartcamera.com, all the weekly articles, including my contribution, the power rankings. But make sure you're checking out everything else as well. Check out the channel. Go back, if you want, in the archives. Check out 2001 the Wrestling Odyssey and the Paul Heyman's Fat Dan podcast because we might have something new in the works in the coming weeks and months. But I'll keep that under wraps until yeah, it's actually coming out because I think I've teased it before and it's stuff hasn't... Uh, come to fruition just yet so i don't want to tease it too much before it happens but we there are plans in the works for me and rob speaking of rob let's talk to rob and the important thing is it's more retro content whatever it is whenever it comes so it'll be a lot of fun to do and as always check it back at all that other stuff in the archive now if you want to follow more present day wrestling stuff follow me on twitter at dude Feliz. check out fightful.com check out fightful select as we ramp up to what is proving to be a huge summer in the world of wrestling. So just check all that out. Thank you for your support and I'll see you guys in the next one. We will see you then everybody. Thanks for listening to this edition. Thank you again to magpie for the donation and thank you for those comments and thank you for being you and we will see you next time everybody. But for now, this has been another smart out moment and we're being counted out.